<laughs> One, two, three. Say it with me. Live nude puppets. That's right. Live nude puppets. It's live nude puppets. It's just fun saying live nude puppets. Live nude puppets. Live nude puppets. They're back. Say it with me. Live nude puppets. say any potty words because my mom is listening oh baby i love you you fucking bastard hey planet earth it's live new puppets we're back it's bobby puppet and i'm jay puppet go f- yourself vaches we ain't got no vaches we don't need no vaches i don't have to show you any stinking vaches do you just wake up some days and go, hey, I remember having sex with somebody? <laughs> yeah. I do there's that. a few of that. Yeah. There's a little of that going on. Yeah, I love that. But I mean, that. It was, my 20s were a blur, dude. I mean, I really don't remember much. You like tell me stories and I'm like, I did? I'm a dick. What did I do? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, there is so much that we've done and uh, we forgot more than we remember, dude. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just that's why I had such a hard time coming up with a story I could share with your whole family at that party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my heart about I'm, my heart went pa- I'm paused the moment I heard that you were going to give a story. You and you and uh, somebody who has the exact same pedigree as you. Yeah, yeah, I was like in paralysis, thinking, "Holy <laughs> shit, what are those two assholes going to say?" <laughs> uh, I was oh. I was the only hey, story. I was hey like, everybody, look, Grandma's over there. <laughs> one time we went to Walmart, and they had a sale. That's about the only story I could share that ever happened between me and Jay. That's it. <laughs> okay, Jay, can you give us a mic check? Vagina, cock and balls. Vagina, cock, cock, check, cock. Cock check vagina. We're good over here. This yeah, I like Thanksgiving. 2017, I mean, 16. it's got all the cool elements. We had violence. We have family. We have excessive amounts of food, and we cap it off with a couple football games. It's Christmas without gifts. Yeah. We repeat it in the same month. We should spread them out six months apart. The cool thing is, all you have to do to appreciate Thanksgiving is be here. Right. No no religious affiliation. You could be a Jew. <laughs> I mean, not at my house, but... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you can't even say that nowadays because of Trump. <laughs> so you can't even up. joke like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beautiful vibe about America. No, but that's the cool thing about Thanksgiving. Every it, it's universal, and it transcends all the other bullshit. It doesn't matter what you do, who you are, or what you believe. If you're standing here, it's a thing. Yeah, you know. And I, I've got a friend. He's uh he's Armenian, and he's from he's he's not originally from here. And so he uh he and I were, but he. He and I were talking, and he's like, yeah, man. I mean, he goes, I love it here. He goes, you know, Thanksgiving is a great holiday. You know, it doesn't matter. It, do- it doesn't matter. <laughs> he goes, I'm here. I'm a citizen. You know, I did all the right things. I, I made all the right moves. I'm supposed to be here. And and, and I own- I- now I'm a part of this, too. Now, the violence thing in the beginning only comes about the American Indians that we kind of stole from. Yeah, we we didn't steal much. I mean, just the whole continent. And you know what the difference between a Mexican and, his, and an Indian is? Where you were standing when they drew the line. <laughs> when the Constitution was written. Yeah. The difference between an Indian and a Mexican is where your ass was standing when a white man drew the line. <laughs> in the sand. Put, are we going to be able to leave that in the show? <laughs> yes. That's the truth. Mexicans are Indians. At least the northern ones are. Like the Baja ones. Just a southern tribe. The Baja ones. 
It was all not one the, big continent. Not the drug the smuggling ones, the other ones. There, uh, a wall. Mm, wall. Other side, Mexican. Mm. <laughs> like two thousand years ago, there's a wall. There's all. There's nothing but Bigfoots and forest and animals and wolves and bears and this big wall that, that the the pilgrims come upon San Diego, California, and they see this big wall. And the Indian like, hmm, Mexican on other side of wall. We build them strong. <laughs> they had a wall 2,000, 200 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> that, that side Mexican, this side Indian. They made all the Chinese people right, make yeah. the wall. <laughs> and that's the, th- that's the story of Thanksgiving. The new version that we're changing. <laughs> the new version. Just, 2016 Just version. like who the first president of the United States was George Washington. That's the new version of the story, not the true version of the story. I love this country. We just rewrite history all the time. In sex we trust. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Thanks, Grandma. Yeah, Grandma. Thanks, Grandma. I really appreciate you putting out. Thanks that you're such a slut. You got pregnant by a guy that you only knew for two months. <laughs> and you told everyone you were a virgin when you were clearly not. Uh, thanks. <laughs> they only had sex in missionary position back then. They didn't have backwards cowgirl. No, that No, that didn't happen. I haven't dated a girl that I could do backwards car girl with lately. I got to do that. And it's been a while. Yeah, you can't do backwards car girl comfortably with a girl who's got a set of double double G's. No. <clears throat> my my wife is too endowed for that. I mean, imagine they have to carry that around all day. Oh, I know, yeah. No, she's she's a trooper. I don't it doesn't matter if I drink coffee in the morning. But four days a week, I go to Starbucks because there's a woman there that's like 10 years older than me. She's my barista. She's got to be seven to 10 years older than me. <laughs> all right. I'm going to flash forward to all the way to the end of this. She's, I'm a barista. I'm a barista. <laughs> <laughs> I hit on her ass so hard. Like, I go through the drive through but I'm professional oh, about it. Here comes that guy in that busted up Cavalier again. Yep, that's what she's thinking because this is like the, one of the top zip codes in Illinois, <laughs> like for, for you know mansions and higher income. So I drive through in my beaten up car. She's a barista going on 17 years, and she's driving like a ba- brand new giant four by four something, you know, that's white and shiny. You know, I was really surprised to find out that a barista is actually a career, and you can't make money at it. I had no idea. Yeah, th- th- but this chick is like five foot one and cool she's the she has the tiniest little frame you ever saw but the most amazing breasts that you ever saw under a shirt that you didn't touch midget fetish check big boob fetish check no she's just like uh like uh let's see like uh a skinny chris from remember chris from back in the day oh yeah, yeah yeah like her but a tiny little skinny version. And she was real solid. Yeah, she was real solid. She kicked my ass. And she was a good drummer, too. She hit the gym way too fucking hard. Yeah. I just pull up to the speaker in the morning, and she's, like, on the other side of the store packing the bakery. And I go, good morning, kitten. And she goes, pull up, whatever she calls me that particular <laughs> she, I'm sure she calls everybody baby. I get baby. And she comes to the counter, and then I just lay it on thick. Whatever I'm thinking, I say. I don't hold back. Like, what did I say? So it's this like a regular morning? day at your house. Yeah. She said, <laughs> Zero filters. Here you go, world. <laughs> but what did I say last week? I said, You are the sexiest fucking human God ever made. I said that to her last week. And then she got a little wet. I said, You know, I'm never going to find a twin of you. And she said, You don't want a twin of me. I'm trouble. I go, I know what kind of trouble you are, and I can handle it. Good things come in small packages. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> bleep, <Clip>. bleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. I never knew that was our last name. Name bleeped out. Yeah. <laughs> Says, There's nothing. I'm dehydrated. But she's married. I wouldn't do anything, but I'm sure the fucking would tell her, <laughs> You are so fucking hot. You should ask her about her muffin tops. <laughs> 
anyone ever found like out I gave that fat checks. guy a hand job in the parking lot of Walmart? <laughs> Which never happened, but I'd be okay with that. Anyway. I'm just laughing. I'm thinking to myself, she runs through the door, hits the button, the doors lock. <laughs> and, and then a bunch of donuts drop out of the sky right in front of the doorway. So fat people can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> they to eat their way through. <laughs> hey, unbreak. I want you to give me a hand job and bring two donuts. <laughs> if you're having what we... an affair with a barista or dating a barista. <laughs> bring a scone. <laughs> bring two scones. So, like, is that code for something? No, bring the fucking scones, bitch. <laughs> I'm hungry, damn it. Get them for free after 4 p.m. Bring them out here because you work there. That stuff looks good behind the counter, but it's all frozen shit. They, all they do is thaw crap out of these places. Uh, yeah, that's it.
that was Stony Pony from Geezer with Richie Tussell on bass, Chris Turco on drums, and with us today is Pat Harrington on guitar and vocals. Pat, how are we doing today? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Well, thanks again for sitting down with me today. Um, you know, you played last night. How'd the show go? Oh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. So we played at, um, we're in, in upstate New York, in Kingston, New York, and uh, we played at the Anchor, which is essentially our home base. And, uh, you know, it was a hometown crowd. It was great to be able to, uh, to be able to kind of celebrate the release of the album with those people. And we played with a bunch of great bands. Uh, it's Not Night at Space, who is another local kind of heavy psych instrumental band. And then uh, also Worshipper from Boston came down and uh, they're a great band on TP Records. Uh, we were standing around talking to them as we were talking to each other as they were playing. We were just like, just got that great kind of old school Dio, like last in line kind of cool. really good stuff. Yeah. I know that you guys have been doing this for a little while, so I uh, wanted to ask you, well, how did you guys meet as a band? Okay, so uh, we're all kind of uh, transplants from New York, uh, from New York City. I moved up here about, uh, it's going to be going on seven years ago. And um, Chris, the drummer, and I originally met um, a few months after I moved here. We were at just at a friend's mutual, uh, a mutual friend's party. You know, I don't know. We just kind of gravitated towards each other because we both looked kind of like, you know, a little a little crusty in the middle of you know, a regular party crowd and started talking and, oh, yeah, I'm a drummer. Oh, yeah, I'm a guitar player. And, oh, yeah, I, you know, we started talking about like Celtic Frost and and Bad Brains. And, it was, you know, just the conversation mm-hmm. just kept going. And then it was like, uh, okay, well, I guess we got to start a band now. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we did. He and I started jamming together. And uh, we noticed there was a kind of chemistry right away and a sound right away. Um, that sound has since changed, but, you know, there was something there. And initially, we brought in my friend uh, Freddie, who I'd been playing on and off in the other projects for years with, and he played bass. Um, and uh, but he also lives kind of three hours away from us, so it wasn't really a great situation as far as that goes. So eventually, he sw- he swapped out, and then we got uh, Richie, who's been with us for almost two years now, and that's when things kind of really took off because that was the first time we were able to really kind of rehearse on a regular basis and really focus on writing and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, it's just one of those things that just kind of happen naturally, you know, and, uh, you know, if you're, you know, right time, right place, right time, meeting the right people. And here you go five years later. And, uh, you know, we're releasing this album and everything's awesome. <laughs> it was really kind of hard to pick a song for the show. Um, I was fortunate enough that you gave me a few selections to hard to kind of pick the right one. It, it was like, everything's really good. <laughs> and oh, thank you. They, they, they all have different attributes that I really like, but really, you know, Stony Pony was, I just loved how sexy and muddy the song was. It's got a huge sound, tons of punch. I mean, it's got to be fucking killer on stage. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, it's funny that you did pick that song because that song is actually a reworking of a song that was on our original, our uh, first album. Uh, and when we started out, we were just kind of, I was playing a lot more like open tuning slide guitar stuff. And so we we're much more kind of like straight blues thing. And the band has changed over the years. We've gotten heavier, more psyched out and that sort of stuff. And, so we've been, that song has been kind of with us ever since the beginning. In fact, it was probably the first or second song that Turco and I ever, you know, kind of wrote together. And because the sound of the band has changed so much, um, when we went in to record, we knew we wanted some bonus tracks and stuff. And we were like, fuck it, let's just kind of do Pony the way that it is now. So we just changed the name to Stony Pony. And um, I think, you know, with what you're talking about with the sound, like, you know, when we went into the recording process, we were just kind of like, fuck it, let's not, let's just do what we want to do. You know, so I cranked up the fuzz as much as I could and everything. And that was probably the first song that we recorded in that session and had the most gnarly guitar tone out of all of it. Because it really it does. Solo. I mean, yeah. and that solo is just well-placed and perfect length. And um, it's almost like it's not there. It just complements it that well. It, it's, it's, oh, well, thank you very it, much. It's that just means perfectly a lot. seasoned. <laughs> it's just where it belongs. Thank you. And, and again, because that song had been with us for so long, you know, we were able to just kind of like say, like I said, fuck it. We just tried all these weird little things and it all worked out, you know. So right. people who are just becoming familiar with the band and may not know the song in its original form, you know, they, it's new to them and uh, like it is to you and, and it stands out on its own. So that's great. Yeah, it really does. Hey, growing up, um, was there a specific band that ignited your passion to uh, get on stage? You know, oddly enough, you know, I was always attracted to music ever since I was very young. I mean, I was listening to like The Doors when I was in fourth grade. I have a brother who's 10 years older than me. So like, you know, he hit me to like The Doors and Zeppelin and some great, great stuff. So I was always kind of into music at a very early age. And when it came time 
to like getting old enough to play something. First, I took a stab at keyboards because I was on a Duran Duran kick for a little while, and that didn't work out too well. It didn't soothe the Savage Beast, I guess. And frankly, man, it, what did it for me was Purple Rain, of all things. The uh, When that album came out and I saw the video for Let's Go Crazy for the first time, it just and watching what Prince was able to do up there on that stage, it just blew my mind. And it was like that, you know, especially when it got to the solo at the end of the song. I was oh, like, yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah, he, he, he was a little in front of his time when he lit it up on a guitar. Like, I, you know, to just take that conversation one step further. Once I did start playing guitar, um, that's instantly when I went. Like the first song I learned, the first real song I learned how to play on guitar was Good Times, Bad Times by Red Zeppelin. My guitar teacher was a Randy Rhodes fanatic. He actually had the hair and a BC rich bitch with all these switches on it and shit. And cool. So he taught me how to play. Like probably the second song I learned how to play was I don't know by Ozzy Osbourne. And then, mm -hmm. you know, not even a year later, I'm asking him to teach me Slayer songs. So once I started to play guitar, as we were kind of talking before about the extremity of it, you know, I, that was, that was my stuff, like harder, faster, louder. That's, that's where my head was at at that time. So within a few years, I went from like, uh, thinking about Prince and all that to Sabbath, Metallica, Slayer, on and on. And then, you know, then I got into hardcore and that stuff. And that was a whole other ball game. But right. I became, once I started playing. Uh, where can fans buy your CDs and shirts at? Okay, so it's kind of a weird thing. So we have CDs which are available uh, through Ripple Music, which is a great label out of California with a ton of great bands on it. And um, they, they do have their own web store on their website. So if you just look up R Ripple Music, you can buy the CDs there. They also have a Bandcamp page where you can buy CDs as well as all the digital stuff. So that would be ripplemusic.bandcamp.com. And then um, the vinyl is actually handled by another label called STB Records, which just went on sale today. And uh, there are like three, four different versions of the vinyl album. Uh, one of them's already sold out, and um, you know, but the rest are there right now. So if, if anybody out there is uh, into the vinyl thing, Go to spbrecords.bigcartel.com and uh, see what's there. Uh, there's great, like I said, there's like four different uh, vinyl versions. And the the label is fantastic at just going overboard with, uh, you know, they make these, when you buy these albums and you get them, you're just like, oh, it's heavy quality stuff. It's uh, 180 gram vinyl, high quality shit, man. And it's just fantastic to be involved with a label that does that sort of thing. Um, and what's interesting as the vinyl, uh, you know, the vinyl kind of, thing is growing um it's a lot of it is growing because of underground scenes like the underground stone rock scene and stuff like the vinyl thing is a very big deal in that world and it's driven a lot by guys who might be older like but it's also you have a whole new generation of, of you know what i guess what they call millennials who never grew up with vinyl and to them it's a brand new thing and when right. you see their reaction it's a whole different ball game they're like oh my god this is fantastic you know i mean is there anyone you'd like to thank He's well, I guess the big the big thing that makes it possible for a band like us to do the things that we do is because you have labels like SDB Records and Ripple Music who are catering to these kinds of bands and surrounding that, you know, just in the kind of underground stoner rock thing, you know, there's a whole kind of infrastructure that operates independently of kind of the mainstream thing. So uh, there are many blobs uh, who cater to that scene and who do a great job of spreading uh, knowledge about the music and and um, there are podcasts and there are internet radio and labels. And so there's this whole infrastructure. And frankly, you know, like everybody who's involved in that stuff is so important to to having this stuff happen. You know, like, a, you know, a band like us, who's a small band from upstate New York, we have because of these kinds of uh, resources, we're able to sell out. You know, I had a guy messaging me this morning from New Zealand telling me how he set his alarm at, at 5.30 a.m. so he could buy the album. When, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Sold out. I mean, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, there's a blog called The Obelisk, uh, which does a great job of kind of documenting the underground scene. And JJ, who runs that blog, has been extremely supportive. And uh, basically people like that, you know, those are the ones that keep things going. And, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, Matthew Cullen, who records and mixes everything for us, does a fantastic job. Scott Craggs, who does the mastering, does a fantastic job. And none of this would be possible uh, if it wasn't for the great work that these guys do to make us sound as good as, as these albums sound. Uh, um, I'm, I'm super thankful for everybody who's involved in that, in that kind of way. Well, Pat, that was a mouthful, but I think you covered everybody. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> you yeah, did a hell of a job, man. <laughs> you you thought a little panky there for a second, you know? but you're all right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Ed, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. It really has been great hanging with you. I mean, we, we've had a lot of fun here. The, the interview is excessively long. I was just looking at the clock. I'm like, holy shit, Bobby's going to kill me. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We just had a lot of fun. That's all that means. I got a massage guy that comes to her work now, and she gets uh, he takes care of her twice. He t- oh, great. That sounds like a great idea, Jay. A massage guy goes in her private office. Yeah, you know, there, there's a whole, whole line of jokes because he's just a massive man. He's a big dude. He's, do the ladies think he's sexy? Oh, I'm sure they do. He's like the black version of The Rock. He is a big dude. I met the guy. He's really cool. And sure he is. <laughs> well, you're there. <laughs> yeah. But he can give her an orgasm by touching her neck the right way. <laughs> exactly. And you can't. <laughs> okay. I think I think Mandy's going to be like that, like pretty and tough as nails and definitely a headache to deal with, even if you're just friends with her. <laughs> that's how that's how she was. I don't want to do another happy learning time. No, no. I'll give you 20 minutes of reading time. OK, <laughs> that's what I want for my birthday. My birthday's in two weeks. I want a happy learning time, a new one. All right. We'll that's all I'm one. asking for from her. Yeah, we'll do it, but they're getting dark. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're, we're, you're taking that to a really fucked up place. Yeah, I know. The episode three, we're already t- we're already sending money to Charlie Manson that we stole out of our mom's purse. It's a puppet show, if you guys don't know, and it's the only puppet that we have, and we're not about puppets, but we made one because of our name, and it's cool, and there's Sesame Street-like well, uh, scenes on our on a, YouTube A purposely channel. fucked up looking public access thing yeah and if you think these ones are messed up in the head you should see the shit that hits the cutting room floor yeah i mean there's <laughs> we have to take one down Some seriously so vetoed bad. stuff the, the cleaning of the gun was good that's really funny it's your money your therapy that's like the most popular girl vibrator there is the funny bunny no i think the real name of it's called the rabbit and then yeah, there's a that's bunch the rabbit. of rabbit i know what you're talking about yeah. I used to date a girl that drove around with one in her little secret compartment in the left-hand side by the door underneath the steering wheel. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I know that one. Sorry about that that little, there's thing. like a little fuse thing right there. Yeah. She would ride that <clears throat> thing after work every day. She'd ride it all the way home. Good girl. Right. That's what I said. <laughs> I would have married her, but she, when she like wiped her coochie... She would say, oh, goop. <laughs> <laughs> goop is a bad word. Yeah, that's a that's I'll no French fly. kiss your ass, but don't call stuff goop. <laughs> <laughs> goop shit you find at Toys R Us right. in a jar. No, <laughs> don't call that. And that's how I oh, ended no. up marrying the woman I married. It's all that one word, the goop word, and there was no way I would have married the girl that I married. I would have married the first girl that rode the vibrator all the way home every day. Uh, oh, that? I remember her. I just didn't know. I never heard that part. Yeah, that really, really fucking hot brunette. Batches. I don't have to show you any stinking batches. Peace and love worldwide. Live life before life lives here. Why do you need a turkey baster? Hey, Live Nude Puppet fans, go to LiveNudePuppets.com to get your Live Nude Puppets t-shirt. We got one for $9.99, we got one for $12.99, we got double-sided, you name it. But our fans come first, the lowest prices in t-shirts, and the only t-shirt that gets you laid. It looks like a penis. (laughs) I love that. Santa, and Jesus, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Please help all the listeners to subscribe and share my daddy and Uncle Jay's podcast. They love to share awesome bands with the world. And please teach daddy to be funny and stop swearing so much, especially Uncle Jay. He smells like whiskey and Philly cheese steak sandwiches. 
Please subscribe and share my Daddy and Uncle Jay's podcast.